If you like a good old heavyweight knockout fight, this is exactly what we're about to get on Thursday night. A marquee matchup, Giannis or Anthony Davis, the Lakers or the Bucks, who's better? On this journey, I'm gonna break down this absolute marquee matchup where you potentially have two teams who are sitting at the top of their conference, both could be 25 and three, heading into Thursday night's matchup. You couldn't ask for anything better than this. But who's better? Is Giannis Antetokounmpo actually better than Anthony Davis? The Greek Freak or the Brown? Which one are you going with? Stick around to the end of this video and I'm going to tell you exactly who's better between Anthony Davis and Giannis and also who's better, the Bucks or the Lakers. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Journey of a Ballaholic, the best talk show for basketball addicts. I'm your host, General Hannibal X. Now, this journey, we're going to be talking about the marquee matchup is on Thursday night. Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Greek Freak. To me, these are two of the best two-way players in the game. The two best big men in the game. You know, kind of apologies to Joel Embiid, who's a true center, but he's not on the level of a Giannis or even an Anthony Davis. The best power forwards in the game as I call them the best big men. These guys right here are absolutely on another level. Both of these guys are top five players in the game. I don't think there's any question about that. Both of these guys dominate on the offense and the defense. But which one is better? Let's go ahead and break this down. Because when Thursday's matchup comes, these two have to be on each other. These two players here, they're too unstoppable for the other team to have to match up and put someone else on them. This is a, a lot of times you get matchups where, like a James Harden, you think would be guarded by Kawhi Leonard, and a lot of times you don't get that. Or a, um, a Steph Curry guarding a Damian Lillard. Sometimes you just don't get those marquee matchups where the two best players or the two players at those positions are going head to head with each other. We're gonna see the opposite of that on Thursday. Anthony Davis, the brow, he's gotta guard the Greek freak. Giannis is too long, too athletic, too dominant to not put your best defender on him. He's just too good. The Clippers try to throw different looks at him. They try, and even though they had Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, they tried to have multiple guys guard him to no avail. Giannis is a different type of animal, man. This is a player who, with one dribble, can go from the three-point line, no, forget that, from the half court with one dribble all the way to the basket. That's not a player that you can put somebody 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, on. It's not, it's not gonna happen. Now, I know that last year in the playoffs, Giannis struggled with his jump shot. And even though Kawhi was guarding him, what a lot of people, I guess, seem to forget is that Kawhi had two, not one, but two, all defensive big men behind him. Toronto was able to form that wall. And so Kawhi was able to put one who's the, one of, if not the best on-ball defender in the game, bar none, he was able to put that pressure on Giannis and Giannis has to pick the ball up and try to get to the basket and have an Ibaka and, and Gasol behind him. Well, you saw when the Clippers and Kawhi tried to face Giannis this year, they weren't able to have the same success. Number one, Giannis has improved his jump shot, which we'll get into in a bit. But he didn't have those all defensive big men behind him. Having Paul George or Pat Beverly on the wing, it's not gonna do much for Giannis because this Milwaukee Bucks team, they are elite on both ends. And one of the things that makes them truly, truly special, and I think this is the thing that, that really unlocked Giannis' potential, was the arrival of Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez, as a former all-star big man, is not what he once was, right? But what he still is, is a legitimate stretch five. He allows the Milwaukee Bucks, and he's truly the X Factor. He's not the second or third best player. That belongs to Chris Middleton and Eric Bledsoe. But Brooke Lopez may be their most important X Factor. What I mean by that is this. His ability as a stretch five to be able to space that floor, bringing that 
uh, rim protector, which is typically the other team's five man, bringing him out of that paint, away from the goal, giving Giannis the space that he needs to drive. Giannis can't be guarded one on one. Typically, he just, just typically nobody can guard him one on one. And so, help defense. How the Toronto Raptors were able to beat him last year, being able to wall him off at the rim. That's how you stop him. But if you're able to put a five man like a like Brook Lopez, who can bring that big man out of that paint, it changes the game for Milwaukee. They've got guys Middleton. Wesley Matthews, Kyle Korver, the Milwaukee Bucks are loaded. The squad is loaded. And Chris Middleton, as his second option, a legitimate uh, wing player who's giving you 18.6 points per game, he's shooting almost 50, 40, 90 from the, from the field, the three-point line, the free throw line. He's a legitimate, efficient scorer for them. You've got Eric Bledsoe at the point guard position who's giving him 15 points a game. As that third option, he's able to play and be a two-way player for them. But he can help space the floor. Wesley Matthews, another one. So the Milwaukee Bucks, typically, they present such a challenge for teams, man, that it's hard to match up with them when you have to bring your big man out the paint to cover Brook Lopez. And you have to, if you, if you double Giannis, he's going to make the right pass. Giannis is going to find the open man. That's why he's giving you five, six assists a night. He's a walking triple-double because he can give you baskets at the paint. He can shoot from the outside, and he can find open guys if you double-team it. Let's touch on that shooting for a bit. Because that right there is what has truly taken Giannis' game to a whole nother level. This is what we've been waiting to see. This is what he had to work on over the summer, and he's done that. He's up his, uh, his three-point uh, attempts. From 2.8 attempts last year up to five attempts a game this year. And it's not just that he's shooting more. This is what everybody has wanted from Ben Simmons. Shoot the ball. Make teams respect you. Giannis isn't just taking almost twice as many threes as he did last year. He's making them at a higher percentage than he's ever did. 32.8% from the three. Which, listen, that's still below average. He's not a knockdown three-point shooter. But 32.8% for a guy who is 6'11", 240, 250, who's an absolute freak of nature that will annihilate you in the paint and around the rim, you got to respect him. Giannis will hit three or four threes a game if you don't step out there and get on him, if you don't cover him. So how do you match up with somebody who physically is just too imposing for most teams? I think Anthony Davis is the key. Anthony Davis is one of the few power forwards that has the size, the length, the strength, and the defensive acumen to be able to compete with Giannis. Like, for instance, a guy like Draymond Green, who's a defensive player of the year in the NBA, Draymond doesn't have the size. He's only about six, really about six, seven. He doesn't have the length. He doesn't have, he has the, he has the defense, but he's just too small for somebody like Giannis, that's not Anthony Davis we're talking about. Anthony Davis is 6'11 with over 73 wingspan. A guy who is athletic. And to me, Anthony Davis is this year's defensive player of the year. I don't think there's any question about that. Or let me take let me rephrase that. He's the leading candidate for defensive player of the year as of this as of this moment, in my opinion. I think right now, if I had to rank the top two defensive player of the year candidates, I would have Davis number one and Giannis number two. One of the things that I think that makes Anthony Davis better than Giannis or is, is specifically the defensive side, okay? I think that Anthony Davis' defense is better than Giannis. Davis is going to give you about one and a half, 1.6, 1.7 steals a game. He's done that pretty much consistently for his career. But he's also going to give you two, two and a half, almost three blocks a game, basically every single year. Giannis has the ability to be, a, a with his length, his width, his, his, his athleticism, he's a defensive terror. He's just not as dominant defensively as Anthony Davis is. Where Giannis has the advantage over Davis is playmaking. Giannis's ability to handle the ball at his size it's special like he's not a, i mean he, listen he, he's no 
you know, Curly Neal or you know, Kyrie Irving, anything like that, with his handle. But he's efficient enough with a tight enough handle to get on on the court where he wants. He can get to the spots on the floor where he wants with it. And he's so strong that when, especially in today's NBA, where you really can't hand check, you really can't get too physical on the perimeter. When he starts and faces up on the perimeter and he starts putting his head down and driving, it's tough to stay in front of him without following him. Anthony Davis is the one player I think that you can put on Giannis and not have to double team. And I think that's going to be the key for the Lakers if they want to try to beat Milwaukee on Thursday in Milwaukee. You got to remember, the Bucs are four. Well, let me rephrase that. The Bucs play tonight. Okay, they play uh, at home against Dallas tonight. There's no, um, what's his name, Luka Doncic. Doncic is out, unfortunately, with an ankle injury. So that's pretty much, let's chalk that up and say that's a win for Milwaukee tonight. Anything can happen, we'll chalk that up and say that's a win. That's going to move them to 14-1 at home, 25-3 and three on the season, heading into Thursday's matchup. Tomorrow, the Lakers are playing at Indiana. Right now, the Lakers are 24-3. They're like 14-1 on the road, 14-game road win streak. They win that game tomorrow. These teams are both set up to be 25-3, and three, where each one of them have only lost once at home for Milwaukee, once on the road for the Lakers. This is a marquee matchup. And Anthony Davis is going to be tasked with guarding the reigning MVP one-on-one. -on -one. Now, the issue, I think, for Milwaukee is that as nice as Giannis is, being their best defender, being their best playmaker, being their best rebounder, he has to do so much. Anthony Davis doesn't have to do it all. Anthony Davis has a guy you may have heard of named LeBron James. To me, Still the best player in the game today. LeBron James' ability to really control the offense, be the, the captain on offense while Anthony Davis captains the defense, that two-headed monster that the Lakers have, it's tough, man. Like, we're seeing the Lakers, they're playing at a level that, other than the Bucs, there's nobody else playing at this level right now. And the chemistry between these two is just, it's sensational. So the Milwaukee Bucks are going to have to look for Middleton, and Eric Bledsoe to be able to spool together to kind of cancel out what LeBron James does. Those two together have to pretty much cancel out what LeBron does. That's how great he is. LeBron on the season is giving you like 26, 27 points a game, almost 10, 11 assists, seven rebounds. He's playing defense, a concerted effort on the defensive end. Right now, in my opinion, it's a two-headed race for MVP between Giannis, and LeBron. That's how dynamic this Laker duo is. When you've got one person in the top two race for MVP, another one in the top two race for defensive player of the year on the same team. Like that's only happened maybe two or three times in NBA history. When you've had a player who won the MVP and a teammate who won defensive player of the year on the same team in the same season historical stuff here so how does Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks how do they deal with the Lakers and this high-powered offense well most teams want to try to start from the head of the snake so do you put Giannis on LeBron because that's the head of the snake from an offensive standpoint Giannis has the size he has the limb that you would love from a Milwaukee standpoint to put him on LeBron James but then who's guarding Anthony Davis? The times where one of those two Laker uh, stars are in the game, you could put Giannis on either or. He's that versatile defensively, that dominant on the defensive end. You could put him on the bronze on the perimeter, put him on Anthony Davis in the post. But when they're both on the floor together to start the game and end the game, he has to choose which one to guard. And unfortunately for Milwaukee, he can't guard the other, or excuse me, he can't guard Anthony Davis leaving LeBron alone, but he can't guard LeBron leaving Anthony Davis alone. Unless the Lakers are going small with Anthony Davis moves over to the five, that's the time, that's the one situation where I think Milwaukee can truly get away with allowing Le uh, Anthony Davis, excuse me, allowing Giannis to guard LeBron James. Because if Anthony Davis slides over to the five, now you have either Brooke Lopez or Robin Lopez that can play the five spot and guard Davis. 
They can't stop Anthony Davis. They're too lumbering, too big, just too slow, too slow to guard Anthony Davis. But they have the size. Especially Brooke Lopez has that defensive acumen with his rim protection to be able to challenge Anthony Davis around the basket. On the perimeter, he's toast. But around the basket, he can kind of deal with, with Anthony Davis. While Giannis can be on LeBron, especially if, Gian, if LeBron has things going. But if the Lakers are going to play big, which is what they typically typically done, we're having JaVale McGee and or Dwight Howard at the five. Now, Lopez, either one of the Lopez twins or brothers, has to be on one of those big guys. Giannis has to be on Anthony Davis. The size is just too much. And that's one of the things that the Lakers have truly been overwhelming teams with is their size and their length. I mean, I, I think people truly don't understand how tall and how long JaVale McGee's wingspan is. Like, he's a legit 7'1 with like a 7'4, 7'5 wingspan. So you can't just hide people on him. He's too, he's too dominant of a finisher, Dwight Howard as well, too dominant of a finisher around the basket to just try to hide somebody on it. So you got to keep somebody with size and, and some girth on those guys. So Giannis on LeBron James, it, it's not you're not going to see that a lot. As even though that's their best matchup on which means Chris Middleton's got to bring his best defensive game. He's known as an offensive player, but he has to bring it cuz you talk about a rested, a healthy and a rejuvenated LeBron James who would love nothing more than to go into the reigning MVP, regular season MVP, into their house and get a win. All season, you've been hearing people, all the naysayers for the Lakers have said they're only winning because of the easy schedule, right? When well, the month of December, which was the Lakers have the toughest schedule in the NBA in the month of December, they started at 6-1. and one. Excuse me, 7-1 and one after last night's win in Atlanta. 7-1, seven, seven straight games. Six of the last seven wins have all been on the road. So the week schedule, that's nobody even brings that up anymore. That's totally out of the way. Once you go into Utah, into Portland, into Denver, into Miami, you can't talk about week schedule anymore. So now you got to cut a couple litmus test games coming up for the Lakers. The Bucks, on the other hand, have been dominating these. They right now have the number one point differential in the NBA at 13.6 points per game. They're absolutely blowing teams out. That's why Giannis is only playing less than 32 minutes per game. Think about that. Giannis is having a career year. Career high in block, excuse me, career high in rebounds, like 12.8. Career high in points, 31 points per game. Career high in three-point percentage. He's shooting, what, 56% from the field. Like 64% on twos. He's dominating. And he's doing it in 31 minutes per game. So they're blowing people out. He's just getting the rest. He's low managing in the game in the fourth quarters. Which is how low management should be done. But we'll get to that on another, another occasion. LeBron James and Anthony Davis and the Lakers, they're not blowing people out like Milwaukee. Are. They're not doing that. Just the other night, just last night against the Atlanta Hawks, the Lakers had to extend themselves even deep into the fourth quarter against a young, depleted Atlanta Hawks team. The Lakers are, are going to be playing tomorrow night while Milwaukee plays tonight. So Milwaukee's going to be the fresher, the more rested team heading into Thursday's matchup. But this is the big boy game. This is the, this is the marquee matchup. There are no excuses. The Lakers are playing right now and have been playing for the last three games without Kyle Kuzma, the third leading scorer. They really are going to need him for this matchup because a guy like Chris Middleton, you would love to be able to put on a, put Kuzma on a Chris Middleton, you know, maybe hide LeBron James on like a Wesley Matthews. And I say hide, not to necessarily say that he can't guard him, but you want to kind of keep LeBron, you know, rested on the court. This is how a lot of the, the older eras, or older generation players rested. You rest on the court, right? You, you rest during timeouts. You rest in the fourth quarter. You steal a couple, you know, there's a TV timeout. You steal a couple extra minutes of official rest. LeBron's got to find ways to rest on defense 
because he's going to have to bring it all on offense. Milwaukee right now is, the, is number one in defense, number two in offense in the NBA. They're the only team who's top two in both. The Lakers are top five in offense and defense. And these two teams are the only two teams in the NBA who's top five in both. But this Milwaukee team presents a lot of problems. A lot of problems. The teams just haven't been able to figure out how to stop. We saw the Milwaukee Bucks against the Clippers, who hands down have the best tr uh, perimeter trio of defenders in the game with Kawhi, Paul George, and Pat Beverly. And they absolutely annihilated them. We're talking about, they were up 41 points at one, at one mark. And I think it was the third quarter it must have been. They were up 41. On the Clippers, I have, this wasn't a, the game where Kawhi rested. Kawhi was playing. Paul George played. Lou Williams played. Marcus Harris played. And they were up 41 on them. This Milwaukee team is not playing. They're taking names. From the, At the beginning of the season, I, pred I predicted that the Philadelphia 76ers were going to be the team to go to the uh, to the finals out of the East. And I still stand on that prediction. We'll get into that, that matchup a little later on. But this Milwaukee Bucks team, man, they're, su they're surprising me. I had them selected to, as being the number one seed. So I, I knew that they would be the better team in the regular season, but I feel and still feel that the, the Philadelphia 76ers are going to be a better playoff team come May and June. But this Milwaukee Bucks, man, they're serious. They only have one bona fide superstar, while the Lakers have two. But Giannis is so good, he doesn't need another superstar beside him. To answer the question of who's better, Giannis or Davis, the Greek freak or the Brown, all bias aside, I've got to go with Giannis, man. Giannis is just, he's next in line, right? So, so right now, LeBron James is sitting on the throne as the best player in the game. That's about to, that's about to change. And I, the thing that I think has to happen for that to change is a couple things. Giannis has to win a chip. In my opinion, you can't be the best player in the game without winning a chip. Jordan didn't become the best player in the game until, in my opinion, until 1991 when he beat Magic Johnson in the finals. Shaq didn't become the best player in the game until 2000 when he won his chip. LeBron, the same thing for me in 2012 when he won the finals MVP. Winning his first championship is when I anointed him the best player in the game. Up until that point, Kobe still had it to me. LeBron's got it, and he's had it since 2012. I don't think he's going to relinquish that until one of two things happens. Giannis knocks him off in the finals and or, or let me rephrase that, Giannis wins the chip or the Lakers win the chip and Anthony Davis gets that finals MVP. LeBron has been talking about passing this torch to Anthony Davis. If the Lakers are able to win it and Anthony Davis is able to go into the finals and dominate in the finals and win the finals MVP, that to me is almost like a passing of the torch. The, what Le, LeBron has been ceremoniously talking about, you know, truly handing it over and, and passing the torch to Anthony Davis. He's talked about it and he's, you know, he's kind of taken a step back and allowed Davis to be the leading scorer, but that would be the true passing of the torch as far as the best player in the game. As of right now, I still have LeBron, and I have Giannis being the next guy who could truly take that throne. That throne. Kawhi's gonna, you know, he's making an argument, and he especially will make his claim in the playoffs. We'll have to see. But Giannis is just—he's on a—he's on another level. Like I say, Anthony Davis is the better defender. Anthony Davis is the better shooter. But Giannis is a better finisher at the rim. He's a better playmaker. He's a better rebounder. All around, I gotta give Giannis the edge over Anthony Davis. Now, when it comes to the matchup between the Bucks and the Lakers, who's the better team? Though their records are the same, though Milwaukee is better, a better defensive team statistically, a better offensive team statistically, when these two teams match up, I think the Lakers are gonna show and prove they're the best team in the NBA. They don't have just one guy that has to do it all.
They've got two guys that can do it all. We've seen Anthony Davis put up a 40-20 game. We've seen him with the 50-point game. We've seen LeBron with triple-double after triple-double. Can Chris Middleton or Eric Bledsoe step up to, specifically in these marquee matchups and specifically in the playoffs, can they step up and raise the game to that level? I don't think they can. So Giannis has to do so much, that, and he is so great that he can handle that load. And against most teams, I don't think it's an issue. Against uh, the only other team, the only team in the NBA that has two top five players in the game, I don't think he's going to be able to get it done. I'm predicting that the Lakers go into Milwaukee and they get a big time statement game win. Now, Friday, I'm going to do a follow up video. The first time I'll do a back-to-back -back video on the same subject, because this right here, I've got to be able to stand in my, you know, 10 toes down in my prediction. And it, whether right or wrong, come check me out Friday, 6 p.m., and we'll break down the reaction to the outcome of the Lakers versus the Bucks. Until then, I appreciate you for taking a look at this video. Hit that subscribe button. Tap that like button and make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you can stay updated with the journey of a ballaholic.